asman guru biyon maha asman parama guru biyon maha asman sarva guru biyon maha so today we're continuing on with our discussion of sharda tilaka chapter 4 which was about initiation it was uh, mentioned in hari bhakti vilas we were studying hari bhakti vilas chapter 2 vilas 2 uh, and text uh, 34 of hari bhakti vilas mentioned that there are four types of initiation the four types of initiation once again are Kriyavati, Kalavati, Varnamayi, and Vedamayi. So these are the four types of initiation mentioned in Hari Bhakti Vilas. They, the four types were not explained in Hari Bhakti Vilas, so therefore we looked at, in Sharda Tilaka and in the fourth Patala or the fourth chapter of Sharda Tilaka, there's an explanation of all these four. We had, last time we had gone through a little bit of that, of the, of the uh, the kriya, the kriya, kriyavati, the kriyavati type of initiation. So we'll try to get through the rest of the uh, the rest of the chapter today. There was some pita puja that was done of the that the we might double up on a few slokas here, but uh, if we start around the uh, the sixty third sloka of the second of the fourth uh, chapter. Then there was a type of pita puja that was done by the acharya, by the teacher, on himself, prior to giving initiation or giving the mantra to the uh, disciple. So it mentions that uh, it mentioned actually that there was a, a meditation that the acharya is doing, that uh, that the mantra is on a pitam or, or a type of altar which is uh, in a money mandapa in a jeweled uh, mandapa or a jeweled enclosure right uh, which is on a, a beautiful island which is in the middle of a beautiful ocean on the earth and all of this is to be meditated upon in the heart of the uh, of the acharya so this is basically starting around verse 60. so then uh he he thinks of that pitam as being square, square Vedika, um, and that Vedika is being held up by four legs, which are Dharma, uh, I'm sure Dharma, Atikama, Moksha, and uh, in, and the form of these legs are red. The, the colors of these legs are red, black, green, and blue, and the blue is also said to be here a type of indigo. So. Indigo, I believe, is a, is a, 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 a sp specific shade of blue, dark shade of blue. So not a light blue, not like a sky blue. So then uh, uh, in verse 64, it continues on, it says, Adharma, etc. So uh, I think actually, rather than Dharma, Kama, Ata, and Moksha, it's actually the Dharma, uh, Dharma, Jnana, Vairagya, and Aishwarya, which are the first part of the Pita Puja. I'm sorry. And then Adharma, Ajnana, Avairagya, and Anaishwarya, which are the next part of the Pita Puja, right? And uh, for those of you who don't really understand Pita Puja, we can, um, we can discuss it some other time, but it's a type of meditation on, um, whenever you meditate upon the deity in your heart, the deity has to be sitting on something. So the idea is that the thing which is sitting, the deity is sitting on is a throne, but the throne has certain legs and even uh, all of the all of the parts of that throne have some meaning, have some esoteric meaning. So when we do the Pita Puja, before we worship the deity itself on the throne, then we are, and remember this is Manasika Puja, this is all within the heart. So uh, before worshiping the deity within the heart, we have to first of all worship the, the altar that, that we set up in the heart, in our mind um, for the deity. Uh, it's very similar to when we go into the temple externally we do we also do that worship of the lord we worship the throne of the lord before we worship the lord so this of course maybe not, uh, not a lot of people are familiar with because um it's really only in the temple worship that this goes on in in pancharatric style temple worship so uh, maybe not a lot of people are familiar with it but you can it can be done in manasa puja it can be done externally as well even in uh, even in house worship house puja it's possible it's just that many people don't uh, don't take it that far we're, we're just starting to get up to speed with uh, 
the fourth chapter of Charitilaka. Again, we're just talking about that internal Manasapuja where you're worshiping the you're, you're going to worship the Lord in the form of the mantra of the initiation mantra on a on a pedestal in a in a jeweled mandapa on an island in your heart. So around um, uh, text 63 of uh, the fourth chapter of Sharda Tilaka, uh, it describes that the pitam or the pita puja, which is done to the to the legs of the the legs of the of of the of the pit of the of the pitam of the which is a vedika which is square square bottom of a mandapa um, which is got a jeweled um, enclosure over it encapsulating the de- the mantra uh, uh, is worship with pita puja dharma so you again with pita puja you worship dharma jnana vairagya aishwarya and then you worship dharma Agyana, Adharma, Adhyana, Agyana, Avairagya, and Anaishwarya, which is the opposite of those things. Right? So uh, and and these are these are seen to be the, the the first four. The first four are 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 seen in the heart as the legs of this of this uh, of this altar of, of this Vedika, which is the bottom of the mandapa. Uh, and they are seen to be red, black, green, and blue, or, or indigo. So then continuing on, doing the rest of the Pita Puja with uh, Adharma, uh, Agyana, Avairagya, and Anaishwarya, the opposite of those four, right? Those are assumed and worshipped or visualized as Risha, a bull, Keshari, a lion, Bhuta, and I don't know what a Buddha is exactly, but some sort of personality. Here it says Satan, S-A-T-O-N. I don't know what that means. That's the, the translator here is, is uh, not clear about it. We have to look at the Sanskrit to see exactly. But anyway, Risha, Keshari, Buddha, and Ibda, Ibda, Iba. And Iba means elephant. So a bull, a lion, you know, a, 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 a Buddha, and an elephant. These are the last parts of the Pita Puja. In the corner, Agneyam, which means the southeast, right? Ambuja shall be worshipped. First, Anandakanda, then Samvina, Samvinala with the, with the uh, mantras, Anandakandaya Namaha and Samvitanandaya Namaha. Okay, then it gets sort of uh, a little bit hard to understand. Shravatatvatmaka uh, Padma, a type of lotus. Prakriti Maya, etc. Uh, Patras, which means vessels. Vikram Vikramaya Keshara. Pancha Pancha Panchas Dvanabij. Idea and then Karnika, the middle, with her Kalas and Surya, Soma, and Agni shall uh, in her in her shall be worshipped. Okay, so Karnika means the 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 the, the middle of the mandala. Um, I, I'm not sure whether we're talking about here an external mandala or an internal mandala. In any case. Uh, the three gunas are then are then worshipped, uh, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, with the mantras, Om Sam Sattva Namaha, Om Om Ram Rajas Namaha, Om Tam Tamas Namaha, and so also are worshipped uh, the Atman and the Antaratman, the Paramatman and the Gyanatman, shall be worshipped according to the ritual rites. In the filaments, right outside of the Karnika. The Karnika is the very center of the mandala, right? And uh, if we're conceiving of the, of maybe, it, maybe this is we're conceiving of the mantra in the middle of a, in the middle of a mandala. As I mentioned yesterday with Chakrabja mandala, um, with Chakrabja mandala, you can have, you usually have uh, filaments or stamens, um, just like if you have a flower, you have the very middle of the flower, but then 
at, in the middle section of the flower, there are also these, um, these filaments that are sticking up, which uh, carry the nectar where the bees come. That is called the, the, the stamens. Um, and, and each one of those stamens represents a syllable of the bija mantra, oh, sorry, not the bija, a syllable of the mantra, which you're going to, to use. So for instance, in Chakrabja Mandala, it can be Om Namo Narayanaya or Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya on those filaments. So there could be eight or 12 for Chakrabja Mandala. So here it says there are filaments which are worshiped, Padma, Pad, Padma, uh, Padman Pita Shakti Devatas, right, being in uh, Varamudra and Abhaya Mudra shall be worshipped. Okay, so um, there's a goddess and her kalas or her, her um, the, the goddess of this mantra, the goddess of the mantra, or it could be Prakriti, the goddess Prakriti, um, right, has got kalas. She's got different expansions. And those expansions are each sitting on a lotus. So you imagine uh, that there are the number of number of lotuses as there are in, in the in the the uh, uh, syllables of the mantra. And on each lotus, there's a, a goddess sitting, and that goddess is sitting there, uh, who is an expansion of Mula Prakriti or Maha or Prakriti, and. Uh, and, and those, god, those expansion goddesses sitting on lotuses are, have the vara, vara and uh, vara mudra, varada, vara means vara, varada, varada and abhaya mudras. So the varada or blessing mudra and the abhaya mudra, the mudra for taking away uh, distress or, or, uh, or fear, which is very commonly seen, right? We, we commonly see deities give, giving the varada mudra, which is the palm up, with the fingers up, blessing. And then when the, when the palm is down, when the fingers are pointing towards the ground, that is the abhaya or fearlessness um, mudra. So uh, a pot made of gold, silver, starting from, uh, from uh, verse 70, a pot made of gold, silver, copper, or clay, right? Washed with the astra mantra. Remember the astra mantra generally is almost dry, but but here there was a, a slightly different Astra Mantra given previously. Um, perf uh, perfume by sandal, right? So it's not, it's not uh, oh, oh, the, uh, I'm assuming that the water that is sprinkled with the Astra Mantra is perfumed with sandalwood paste. Um, and some, some, other, some other thing called ag agalocham, which I don't know what it is, but it's some other ingredient for to, to be put into the water. And with camphor, meaning pachakapuram, which means the uh, green type of uh, camphor, natural camphor that comes from the trees. Um, so it, it should be beautiful, this pot, uh, in formation, covered with clothes, uh, so that you should also uh, set up a pot like this with, uh, with, with cloth, uh, covering it um, like a chudder, uh, not having any holes, decorated with three color threads, right? White, red, and black. Okay, so the three colored threads, when, when you set up a pot, you're going to take the pot and you're going to wrap threads around the pot in a crisscross, crisscross uh, way, in a crisscross manner, right? So if anybody hasn't seen how to do that, there's a very nice um, video on YouTube, uh, G, uh, GRD Iyer group, they show how to do that very, very nicely. Um, the, the pot represents a body. It represents a deity into which we can call any devata that we like, any personality that we like. So it's sort of like a blank deity. The crisscross strings on the pot represents the nerves of, of, the, of the body of the deity. Now, in this case, it's made of uh, uh, the threads which are tied around are dyed different colors, white, red, and black. So that the white one represents Satvaguna, the red one represents Rajaguna, and the black one represents Tamaguna. So they represent goodness, passion, and ignorance, the three gunas, right? Having sandal, 
Uh, so those those also have to have some sandalwood. They have to be um, purified with sandalwood paste. Sa uh, oh, I'm sorry. Sandals probably going to. This is going to go inside. Okay, so it's it's decorated with these threads, but it, inside the pot is going to be sandal akshata, which means full rice, uh, which colored rice. Kurcha, usually uh, mixed with turmeric or or uh, kumkum, to just make it a little slightly colored. So sandalwood paste, kum, uh, akshata, a kurcha is also put in there of darba grass or kusha grass, right? So a kurcha is like a is like a, a, a short, um, like a wand made of kusha grass with a brahma grunty knot tied in the end of it, the end that has the 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 end that has the um, the tips of the kusha grass is tied into a knot. Then the other end can be can be also tied together so that it doesn't um, splay out. But 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 it's important to put the knot at the end with with the tips um, coming out of the knot so that you can use the tips for touching or sprinkling. So that goes in, and you put the you put the root the root end in the pot first, and the the knot the Brahma Granthi sticks out from the pot. If you normally you would put a shripala or a coconut on top of this pot, I think everybody's pretty much familiar with that sort of thing. Okay, and bearing nine nine ratnas or jewels. So there are nine jewels which, rep, which represent the nine planets. So uh, in India, it's very common you can go to a jeweler and you can buy for even one rupee little flakes of these jewels for for use in in pujas, and you just put them in in the uh, in the pot. So you can you can get that Navaratna. They're very very not not really. We're not using here um, jewelry quality jewels. We're using we're just using chips of of jewels normally. If you want to use high quality jewels, you can, but then you have to probably um, you know you probably don't want to waste them because you probably want to find uh, after the puja you want to probably get them back after the visarjana. The, the valediction of the deity in the pot, you want to probably get those back if you're using higher quality jewels. You can, right? Uh, another, another thing that you can do if you don't have those jewels is many, pe many people have pendants or they have especially rings with all those nine jewels on them. So you can just take a gold ring or whatever ring you've got, gold or silver, a Navagraha ring, and you can just put that in the pot, right? So that's, a, that's another trick and that's easy. And then they don't get, they don't, don't get lost and they don't get, they don't, you don't have to search for them later, right? Because you can easily take the ring out of the pot, right? So, because we just want that energy from those nine jewels in the pot. So, uh, okay, so that, shall, that pot shall be kept by the Yajamana. Now, once again, the Yajamana here is a Deshikendra, also called the Deshikendra, is the Acharya, right? So the Acharya is the Yajamana. Um, with a high with a high pronunciation of the mantra, Om, he shall feel that the kumba uh, is one with the pita. So I'm not, I'm not. It seems like he's establishing. He's establishing a pot, maybe on on top of a mandala. Right here, it wasn't exactly explained the mandala, but uh, he's establishing that. And he's he's with the with the he's establishing that pot on the mandala, and with the with the with the chanting of the omkara, he's considering that that kumba to be one with the pita. Uh, I'm not sure. I think that means the pita that's that he just established and worshipped in his heart, right? So um, the pot shall be filled with uh, with kash kashaya or boiled water of uh, Boiled water, um, kashaya. It says boiled water of milky tree. So, uh, uh, or of cover of palasha tree, or with water from holy places. So different types of different types of trees. Um, I guess there's some element to maybe using some sap or some wood from the tree to, to, to put in the, in the, in the water. Um, or you can just get water from holy places. Normally that would probably be easier. Perfumed with sandal, camphor, flowers, etc. And uh, normally when we do this, when we fill the pot, 
with the water, we strain the water so that there's a, if there's anything in the water, uh, it's strained out. So even if there, even if you put spices in a pot, when you when you set up a sacrificial pot, um, you want to pour, you want to first of all mix the spices in the water and then pour the water into the pot and uh, put a cloth on top to strain out all of the all of the uh, the the undissolved pieces of spices and whatever it is. Okay. Now, if it's if it's metals or if it's jewels or something like that, then you have to put those things in because otherwise, you, you shouldn't strain those out. But but other things which are supposed to dissolve in the water, can you can you can put those in and mix those in a in a separate container and then pour them through a cloth, and filter them. Okay. So while filling, he shall do japa of the Bula mantra, right? So while he's filling the pot, the acharya, he does japa of the Bula mantra. The mantra that he's going to give an initiation to the student and uh and letters the mula mantra and letters in opposite way uh for these are with the atman okay so he has to do japa of the of the of the mantra backwards in he has to reverse the 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 uh reverse the letters of the mantra uh Sandalwood, it's sandalwood paste, etc. Eight materials uh, shall be stirred into the conch. So previously we talked about yesterday establishing the conch, establishing um, chaining the mula mantra over the conch, establishing the deity of the mula mantra in the conch, using a little bit of the water from that conch in the prokshini patra for sprinkling, and also um, keep and and also keeping a full conch of of water with the with the with the uh, the deity and the mula mantra established in that conch, so here it says the eight materials shall be stirred in the conch. Now the eight materials again refers to um, astaganda. Astaganda is a powder made up of these eight different types of spices and uh, saffron and camphor and and uh, allspice and and um, um, cloves and nutmeg and uh, cardamom and some some other things. Okay, so uh, it was mentioned in Haribhakti Vilas. Actually, in Haribhakti Vilas in the second Vilas, it mentions two two lists of these different ingredients. But anyhow, you get them, you grind them up in a in a in a spice grinder, and then you put them in. Put and you can keep them for quite a long time before they go inactive. But you can keep them for quite a long time, and then you can just put a little bit in the in the conch shell here to flavor the water of the conch shell. So. So these eight materials can be stirred into the conch, filled with existing water after filling the pot. So you're probably going to put this in the put this spice uh, mixture in the pot. Also in, in in the as I said, you put it in the water first in another container and then pour it into the pot, the flavored water you put into the into the into the pot, and you can put it into the conch too. And in that conch, all the colors shall be invited. So you should do a vahana of all the, the kalas. What are all the kalas? Now, we discussed yesterday that in the conch, there's a conch stand and there's a conch. So the conch stand, you have to invoke vani mandala, the, the kalas of the vani mandala. The vani mandala is the fire mandala. The fire, fire mandala has 10 kalas. It has dasa kalatmana, dasa kalatmana. So there are 10, it's mentioned in Haribhakti Vilas also in the, in the Kriyavati section, in the section of the, that we already discussed about the, uh, the, the uh, Diksha there, there are 10, 10 kalas or 10 sections, 10 different expansions, let's say, of, of fire. Right? And it gives the names for each of them and each one of them you have to do a vahanam, you have to invoke each one of them. So, you know, some Om Kalai, Om Agnaye Namaha, Avahiyami, Stapiyami, Pujami, like that. Each one of them in the in the in the conch stand for the and then and then in the conch cell itself, you have the Surya Mandala, right? The Surya, these are remember, just remember, just we'll recap for a second. There are three three mandalas in conch worship. The first one is the Vani Mandala, the, the fire, the fire. The second one is the Surya, the sun. The third one is the moon, right? So there's the Surya Mandala and the, the Vani Mandala, the Surya Mandala and the Soma Mandala. 
right? So now these represent the three, uh, three sources of light or light energy in this world, fire, the sun, and, and the moon. These are the three, three types of light. So the conch shell stand represents fire, the conch shell itself, the sun, and the water inside the conch shell is the moon, right? So, and, and remember also these, are, these have to do with purification. As we said yesterday, there's this Soshana Dahana Plavana situation where, uh, um, or ritual that you do to purify different things where you dry things, you dry things and burn them and then nectarize them. So this is also very similar to that. So, so there are different expansions or different colors of each one of these. So there are 10 kalas to the, to the, to the, uh, to Agni, to the Vani Mandala. That's why when we do, if you look in, in, in our simple Arjuna Padati, Iskana Arjuna Padati, it goes Vani Mandala Dasa Kalatmani Namaha. Right? Ete Ganda Pushpe Om Am Vani, Om Ram Vani Mandala, Ram is a Agni beach, right? Om Ram Vani Mandala Dasa Kalatmani Namaha. And you put some, uh, you touch with sandalwood paste and, and Flower, flower petal to the stand of the conch. The conch itself is worshipped as the Surya Mandala. So there are, so while there are ten parts to the um, the fire mandala, there are um, to this to this to the soma mandala there are twelve. I'm sorry, excuse me. To the Surya Mandala, the sun mandala, there are twelve, which represent the twelve months of the year or the twelve signs of the zodiac. Same thing. So uh, then you have uh, there are 16 to the to the soma mandala or the or the moon the moon mandala and that is because the moon goes through 16 titis right from pratama to chaturti uh, uh, pratama to, to chaturdasi right you have 1 to 14 and then you have amavasya the new moon and purnima the full moon so you add 2 to 14 you get 16 so there are so there are dasakala dasakalas of of the Agni Mandala, ten. There are twelve kalas or Dwarasa kalas of the Surya Mandala, and there are sixteen or Sodasa kalas of the Soma Mandala. Okay, so that's a, just a recap, a little bit of recap about conch worship. Okay, so so we have to do a Vahanam in the conch, which means the conch shall stand the conch and the water of the conch of all these kalas. So now we're doing that the, the invocation. That's also mentioned in Hari Bhakti Vilas, by the way. Okay, so these are all elements of Kriya Vati Diksha, right? So at uh, at first, and here he's going to go into the details. So this is uh, starting from uh, verse seventy-six of the fourth chapter. At first, ten kalas of Agni, then twelve kalas of Surya, and sixteen kalas of Soma. See exactly what I said. And lastly, 50 colors should be called. 50 colors should be called. Okay. Now, when they talk about 50 colors, what they're talking about is they're talking about matrika colors, right? The matrika, remember, matrika means mother, but it also refers to the different uh, alphabets in the, the different uh, letters of the alphabet, the Sanskrit alphabet, right? So, 50 kalas shall be called and mantri and the mantra and the mantri means there's a person there, especially who has to chant mantras. It, in this case, it's probably the Acharya himself shall do japa in, in all attention and then observe prana pratista. Right. So after, after you've done, after you've done these uh, worship in the conch shell and invo invocation of these 10, 12, and 16 kalas of the Agni, Surya, and Soma Mandalas. Then you have to do the 50 kalas of the alphabet or the matrikas, right? You have to invoke them. And then you, after that, you have to do, do the japa of the mantra with all attention and observe the prana pratista of the mantra. So you install the mantra in the water of the, water of the conch shell. Then you have to do prana pratista for the mantra. You have to enliven the mantra. You have to enliven the mantra and give it shakti, give it power, right? So that's the, the situation of prana pratista. 
He hasn't gone into detail here of the prana pratista, right? But, but uh, the prana pratista details I've given before in, in short, but they can be gone through again. So um, Gandha, Gandakshita is classified in three kinds. Okay, so he's talking about here, Gandastika. Okay, Gandastika. Okay, so remember we were talking about eight types of fragrant uh, things which are put into the water, right? So here they're saying, starting from verse 79, they're saying that there are actually three different lists of, Gandak, of, of Gandastika, right? Uh, I call it, in South India, they call it Astagandam, but here they're calling it Gandastika. It's the same thing. Whether you put Astika first or Ganda first, it means eight types of perfumed items, right? So here there are three kinds mentioned in Sharada Tilaka. Uh, the Shakti Gandhas, the Shakti Gandastika. First thing is Shakti Gandastika uh, is a set of one chandan or sandalwood paste, two aguru. Oh, here we go. This agal, agalocham, which was mentioned before, is actually aguru. Aguru is a, is a type of perfume. Uh, then it says chora has no... Um, no uh, description of what chora is. Kumkum, rochan, which is a yellow pigment made from cow urine, right? Uh, and uh, jata, jata mansi, jata mansi, maybe nutmeg, or maybe we can look it up. Maybe nutmeg, or maybe, um, maybe allspice, or whatever it is. Kapi, which I don't know what it is. Uh, and then kapura, kapura means camphor. The green camphor or natural camphor, right? So those are the those are the gandhas used. They're called the shakti gandhas, right? So, so now they're going to explain also here Vishnu gandhas, right, and Shiva gandhas, right? So the, what's the idea of this? Because this is a very general tantra, they're explaining that there are these three types. So it's assumed that if you have a mantra, if you're giving initiation into a shakti mantra that you use the Shakti Gandhas. If, when you're doing rituals for Shakti, because this is not a Shakti Agama, this is not a Shaiva Agama, it's also not a Vaishnava Agama. It's a general Tantra. So they're giving the alternatives for the worship of Shakti, the alternatives for the worship of, of, of uh, Vishnu, and the alternatives for the worship of Shiva, because these are three main Agamas that are there in, in Hinduism in, in India. So, those those ones that I just mentioned, that's the that's they're the they're the things that you should use if you're worshiping Shakti. Uh, if you're worshiping Vishnu, here's the set for Vishnu, the Vishnu Ganda Akshita, which is given in the next sloka, but sloka 80, is Chandan Aguru, Rivera, which I don't know what it is, Kushta, which I don't know what it is, Kumkuma, uh, Kumkum we know, Sevyaka, Jatamansi again. And Mura, 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 I believe is, uh, we can look that up, but uh, we can find out what those are. Okay, so then next in the next, in the next verse, he says, the next verse, he says what the Shiva Gandastika is. So the eight uh, perfumed items which are used in Shiva Puja are Chandan, Arguru, Kapura, Tamal, Tamala, Tamala, come, assuming it comes from the tamal tree. Jala, not sure what that means. Kumkuma, Kushi, Kushita, and Kusta. Okay, all of these things we need to, to look up and find out exactly what they are. But since we're not really interested so much, we can perhaps look up the ones for Vishnu and not bother about the Shakti and the Shiva ones. But if you want to do those pujas, of course, if you want to offer those mantras to somebody, then you have to use the particular set of eight perfumed items for the for the particular devata, either Shakti or Vishnu or Shiva. Then it says these are to be mix, mixed in equal portions. Now that's just put in brackets there. So that's something that the, the translator is saying that may come from some sort of um, commentary. I'm not sure if there's a commentary which explains that, um, but it seems like that's, we could look at the text, but it seems like that's not something which is actually st stated there. My experience with uh, Vishnu, Vishnu uh, Astaganda in South India is that, um, is that the people who explain to me about how to make it is it's not in equal proportions. 
So it's in there's certain proportions for the different things. Because obviously, if you make a powder and, and it's got equal proportions camphor and equal proportions saffron, saffron is very, very expensive and very um, small. And you don't need, it's very potent also. So you don't need an equal, an equal amount of saffron to the camphor that you put in something or to the chandan that you put in something or to the nutmeg that you put in something. And as I said, in practical, in practical pujas, in practical pujas, if you're going to make, if you're going to make a, a, have a pot and you're going to put flavored water in the pot, practically you don't always get uh, a lot of saffron and all these sort of things. So you can just, what you can do is you can just get cloves. You can just get cloves and cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, these sort of spices, allspice. Uh, and you can and you can just grind those up and you can put those things in, which are very common. And, you, and probably in anybody's kitchen, they've got some cloves, they've got some, if, if nothing else, you can just put clove powder, a little bit of clove powder in water, it's enough. Okay. So um, continuing on, verse 82, it starts, uh, verse 82, 84, they talk about doing the prana pratista of the devata in the, in the pot. So um, I'm going to read here. It's in Devanagari. Just going to read the uh, the the, uh, the the mantras that they put here for Prana Pratista. Om Yam Ram Lam Vam. Now, I don't know if this is correct. It looks like a spelling mistake here. But the next one is Shem, which would be S with an acute accent. E Anushwara M. So I think it should be Sham. Normally it's Sham, not Shem. It, it seems like it's a mistake, a spelling mistake in the book here. Um, then, then sham, the cerebral s, then sam, the dental s, then haum, h-a-u-m, or h-a-u anushwara, amushya prana iha pranaha, jiva iha stitaha, prana iha prana means amushya, means that, that uh, let, let, let there be life and uh, and and jiva obviously jiva iti stitaha let the living per, the sentient being be situated here jiva iti iha stitaha amusha and now again there's a spelling mistake here the second amusha is spelled amuvu amuvashya no there's a there's an extra letter here which is incorrect um so Amusha Sarvendriyani, Amusha Param, Vang Mano, Mano Nayana Shrotra Grana Prana, which is talking about the knowledge acquiring senses, right? Um, Iha Gatya, Shukam, Chiram, Tishtantu, right? And uh, we, we can remember this, uh, this mantra also from Hari Bhakti Vilas. In Hari Bhakti Vilas, later on, it's going to explain how to do the Prana Patista. Um, when it explains Buddha Shuddhi, because in Buddha Shuddhi we do a prana pratista of the Lord within the heart, and uh, and we use these mantras. So in fact, they they add a in Harivakta Vilas they add a swaha on the end of this mantra. But this is part of the Buddha Shuddhi, and um, and it, and it's used in the it's used in the prana pratista of deities, but it's also used in this uh, Buddha Shuddhi, where, where we purify the body before we do certain certain rituals, any rituals like Japa Homa uh, uh, teaching or, or um, giving a mantra or um, um, prana pratista of a deity. Okay. Or puja. This is the form of the prana pratista mantra. It is, it is in the place of a musha where, where you have in the mantra, the name of the particular devata shall be given, right? So in this, in this uh, text, wherever you see a musha, you put the, name of the deity of the devata totally totally meaning the total meaning of this is let the sun let the that let the sense organs life and mind of the particular devata come and stay here this is the this mantra is the life giver so it's enlivening the deity after you do a vahanam and you invoke the deity which is invoked through the mantra of the deity because the mantra of the deity is non different from the deity so invoked in the in the in the pot Right. Um, in the case of Gaudi Vaishnavism, that would be, and it's described in Hari Bhakti Vilas, invoking um, Lord Krishna in the pot, right, 
with the chanting of the Gopal Mantra. Okay, so then continuing on, uh, text uh, 85, the, full, the face of the pot shall be covered with leaves. So we take of the uh, leaves of the holy fig. So sometimes uh, they use mango leaves, but sometimes they use fig leaves because the fig, the uh, udumbra, um, um, it says here, holy fig, breadfruit, and mango tree, trees, right? So there are, there are different leaves that can be used. Usually that usually five leaves are put in there, which represent in the body of the pot, the arms, the legs, and the genitals of the pot. And they can be all attached to one stem or they can be separate. And you can put them in, you put the, uh, the, end, the, the point of the leaf sticking out. And, um, and uh, normally it's just mango leaves, but here it's saying breadfruit could be used. And fig of course is holy and, is, and the fig tree is, is equal to Lord Vishnu. Sometimes that you see in temples, um, especially in South India, in the courtyard of the temple, there'll be two trees. So one tree is the fig tree, you know, the uh, uh, banyan tree, the banyan tree. So the banyan tree, otherwise known as the fig tree, right, um, is there and represents Vishnu. And then there might be another tree, the uh, Bilva tree, the Bilva tree there, which represents Lakshmi. So again, when they do an opening of a temple, um, I've seen this um, often, they'll plant these two trees and uh, they'll actually install Vishnu and Lakshmi in the trees and they'll marry them also. They'll marry the two trees together and that'll be part of the opening of a new temple. And then they'll grow, the trees will grow after, 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 uh, after some time there'll be big trees. Uh, okay, so shall be kept assuming that uh, uh, and as, assumed as culpa riksha, the eternal, the, the, and the pot shall be assumed like a culpa riksha, an eternal tree. Okay, so we, th we, must, we should think of the, 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 the pot now with the leaves coming out of it, we should think of it like a, a culpa riksha tree. So that's just a, an, a, a meditation on, on the, uh, the, the leaves coming out of the pot. So continuing on, then a uh, it says here a tumbler, a tumbler, hmm. tumbler means a means a like a cup, right? Where the fruit shall be shall be kept upon the leaves, or a tub, a tumbler. I don't know what that means. Where the fruit shall be kept upon the leaves. This this English translation here is very bad. Then the pot shall uh, shall cover. With, with covered be covered with two tiny white cloths. Okay, so basically, sometimes sometimes what they do is instead of uh, instead of putting the fruit directly on the leaves, which are in the mouth of the pot, they they put a cover. They put a cover, a metal cover, like a a, a small um, a copper plate or something on top, and then they put the fruit on top of that. The fruit. Here it's they say fruit, but in general it's a coconut, right? So it might be some other sort of fruit in some cases, but usually it's what we call a shripala or a fruit or a coconut. Okay, so then then you put a couple of chutters on top, a couple of white chutters on top of this. Uh, under the shadow of the eternal trees, the pot shall be worshipped with the mula mantra devata being invi invited. Okay, so now that we now that we invited the, the, the deity of the mantra, which is going to be given an initiation into the pot. And we've done the prana pratista of the deity in the pot. Then we're going to, after that, we're going to worship the pot with different upacharas like that. So normally it'll be 16 upacharas because it's the main pot. In Pancharatra, this is called uh, Mahakumbha Puja. And Mahakumbha, the Mahakumbha, you have every deity that you're installing in an installation, you have a Mahakumbha. Now, around the Mahakumbha in Pancharatra, you have other Kumbhas or other pots, which are called the Upa Kumbhas. Upa Kumbha, Upa means subsidiary. So you've got the Maha, the great one, the main one, the primary one, and you've got the Upa, the smaller ones, and the smaller ones go around. So normally the smaller ones are, are eight around and they represent Vasudev, Sankarshana, Prajumna, Aniruddha, and um, um, four other deities, which escaped me right now, um, and you you put them you put them around, 
like that in different in different directions like that so it's very it's very common that you have that you might have a that you might have a a main pot with a particular deity or more than one right if you've got more deities to install um and then you're going to have some subsidiary pots around those in, in which you have to put uh yeah put and worship other deities like that so under the uh, okay so uh continuing 88 pronouncing the mula mantra from brahma Randra chaitanya chaitanya means life or life force or or consciousness brahma Randra is the is the top of the head shall be brought through the shishumara marga the shishumara I, i'm sorry shushumna shushumna marga okay what's the shushumna marga okay shushumna marga in 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 tantra shastra uh we have this idea of different chakras within the body okay so there's uh there's there are we, we we've all heard about these different chakras in the body right it's starting from the muladhara up to the sahasradala so the sahasradala is a thousand petal, petal lotus which is again during buddha shuddhi we keep a thousand petal lotus just above the head where we keep the soul and the super soul while we're burning dry, drying burning and nectarizing the material body and recreating it in a in a pure form and then we put the soul and super soul back in the heart this is all done mentally with mantras all right so this is buddha shuddhi so there are different chakras chakras are centers of energy within the body where the nerves say connect um but they're subtle so it's not that we can cut open a body and we can see a chakra so it's a subtle thing it's a and and they and they represent also different aspects of the material world which we were talking about in the beginning of this that there are these 25 tattvas and there's a progression of the different um um in creation there's a progression of the different elements from one to the other from one to the other yeah so in creation and and if we do and and in dissolution they retreat back into each other right there's a dissolution means they go backwards right so that's why he was talking about um chanting the mantra backwards right so sometimes that you'll do nyasa forwards and sometimes you do nyasa backwards right with the mantra the syllables of the mantra will be so that is called when we when we say that they, when we say go through a certain thing in in the, in the shristi order or the creation order it means going through it forwards when we say going through it in the samhara order it means going backwards so when we do puja there are actually three types of nyasas that we do right uh, and again nyasa means touching certain parts of the body or the deity and uh and chanting and and placing certain syllables of the mantra uh there um to purify the the body and to purify the deity you know uh especially when we do prana pratistha like that so nyasa goes through we go through nyasa in a shristi way we're going through it in the creation order when we go through it backwards it's called the samhara order there are actually three types of nyasas there's a, a, a um shristi as um stit uh, shristi stiti and laya shristi stiti and laya right so shristi means creation the creation way stiti means the maintenance way and and laya means the pralaya means the uh samhara the destruction way which is re the reverse of the shristi right so um it's interesting so now in tantra shastra um sometimes it depends on what ashram you belong to as to which nyasa you use so a brahmachari will use a you know shristi nyasa grastu will use stiti nyasa and a, and a, and a sanyasi will use a samhara nyasa right it's it's it happens sometimes like that there's a uh, there's a uh, a, pu a puja padati called gopala gopala chana padati which is a gaudiya vaishnava padati right coming from uh orissa used in jagannath puri where they specify that uh, brahmachari should use one nyasa grihasti should use another nyasa and sanyasi should use another nyasa so it just so it may depend upon that and then otherwise otherwise in pancharatri usually what we find is that they use these different nyasas at different times in the worship for different purposes so here here we started off with the the worship of this pot by doing a samhara samhara um 
we were doing the, the reverse, we were chanting the mantra in reverse. So now he's talking about, and now he's talking about here, um, uh, he, uh, what I wanted to get to was the Shushumna Marga. Okay, so so uh, I got a little sidetracked there. Okay, so each each chakra has to do with uh, different elements. So la, uh, lam yam ram vam. These are all different um, different bija mantras that have to do with the different chakras and have to do with the different um, elements. So, for instance, I'll give you an example. It may be very complicated here. So, I'll give you an example. Muladhara chakra is in the base of the spine. It's the lowest chakra. It has to do with the with the the excretory organs or the anus, right? So, um, because stool comes out of the anus and stool is solid like that, so the that that is that is um, uh, um, that is understood to be the earth chakra, it's the earth chakra. Whereas the next chakra up has to do with the, with the, with the, 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 urinary, the urinary tract. So it has to do with water, right? So then as we go up, it goes from earth, water, fire, air, fire in the stomach chakra, right? Air in the lungs, right? Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense, right? So this is when we meditate upon the different chakras, the different elements and the and the different bija mantras for the different elements are used to meditate upon the different chakras. Now, the idea in yoga, in mystic yoga, is to raise the the life force, uh, to 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 bring to bring the to to awaken the life force, which is called the kundalini, right, and to bring it up through the different chakras to the top. So similarly, what we're doing in Buddha Shuddhi, we're taking the life force. Which we, which we consider to be in the heart and we're bringing it to the Sahasradala. But anyway, the, so that idea of raising the, raising the life force to the chakras right now, those chakras are there. So imagine that there are those at least five or six chakras are there, right? So they are vertical within up and up the spine of the, of the, of the living being, right? From the Muladhara to the Sahasradala. There are also pathways of energy that connect those, like uh, like roads or freeways, like autostrada, right? And they're they're connecting those things, right? But how do they connect them, right? So there is there are there is one on the left side and one on the right side of the body, it's the ida and the pingala, and so they're they're two roads, they're two roads. But there's one that goes straight up the middle and combines the two. That is called the shushumna. That is a shushumna. So you've got the Ida, the Pingala, and the Shushumna. There's these three highways which the which the energy travels up, right? The direct one, the most direct one, is the Shushumna. So where where so basically you've got this energy in the body which is traveling up and down the body through the spine, right? And it it travels on these three pathways. Now where the pathways cross, so if we've been on a highway, we know that there will be different roads. And maybe the roads are all going to the same place, but they do cross at certain points and you can get off the highway and you can go onto another highway and you can cross over. So, so if, you, if you start off on the left and the right and you come and you cross over at the chakra and then you cross over and then you're on the other side and you cross back over the chakra, that is where the chakras are. The chakras are simply meeting places of the Ida, the Pingala and the Shushumna Nadis, right? Okay. So what it's saying here is it's saying the Shushumna Nadi, the Shushumna Marg should be should be taken. So what we do, what are we, what are we saying? We're meditating that the Mula Mantra is being in, in, invoked in the in the pod, right? The deity is being invoked in the pod. And through the Brahma Rundra, the Brahma Rundra, say of the top of the coconut, right? And is and is and is brought into the pot like that, in the brought into the pot like that. Through the Brahma Rundra, and we're imagining the Shushumna. So, so okay. So basically, what are we doing when we have a deity or when we have a pot, right? Or uh, right, we when we do prana pratista of that deity, we're going to say, we're going to touch on the on the top of the head. We're going to put something on the top of the head, and we're going to imagine the power. We're going to imagine the power of the deity, or the life force being infused in the whole deity through the Shushumna Nadi in the in the deity. 
Does it make sense? Right. Okay, so that's what it's saying here also. It's also saying that. So that this is the method of doing the prana pratista. So with the mula mantra, so it says here that, uh, that fallen on flower, flowers kept in the hand shall be invited in the statue. In the statue, I think here means the, the pot, that he's, he's doing the prana pratista and he's throwing some flowers on the top of the coconut of the, of the whole pot. And he's imagining that's the Brahma Rundra and that the power to, from his heart, from the mantra within his heart, the guru is, is, is putting the power of life of that mantra, of that deity into the pot through the Brahma Rundra, through the Sushumna Nadi into the pot. That's Pranapatista. Okay. So then it says, these are, then it says the mudras to be involved. To be used, some stapana, sunny dana, sunny dana, sunny rodana, sunny sakali karna, avaguntana, and amriti karna. So I think we've been over these before. So there are these, there are these. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six munch, six mudras, which are generally used uh, in Vaishnava puja. There may be more, more than that. For the Vaish, for the Pancharatric Vaishnava version of this, you can check out the Avahanadi mudra video that i put on my youtube pa uh, youtube page youtube channel so uh but but as far as smartest are concerned a gen in general there's these six mudras that are used so so these mudras shall uh, shall be done with this particular mudra being being attentive so there are mantras and there are mudras to to perform at this point to do the avahana of the deity Using the using the mantra, the mula mantra, in the pot. Okay. <coughs> then hospitalities, welcome inquiry, shall be done. So then you offer the different upacharas to the deity after you've done this. Kushala prashna is inquiry about the well the wealth and welfare. I say this is very very. Um, this is a little bit more complex here. What they're doing is. They're, they're, he's explaining about the different uh, upacharas that are offered, the different services that are offered to the deity after you do this prana pratista. So he says, um, first of all, you invoke the deity, you do the prana pratista after you do show the mudras and everything like that, and invite him. Then you inquire about the wealth and the uh, the wealth and welfare. The, it should be health and welfare, I believe, of the of the deity. Then padya is offered. So padya, water usable for washing the feet, shall be given to the lo lo the lotus-like foot with the hridaya the hridaya mantra. The hridaya mantra is hridaya namaha. Hridaya namaha is the hridaya mantra. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how you offer padya with the hridaya mantra, but anyway, it says here you're supposed to offer it with the hridaya mantra. This water consists of Shamaka, Durva, Dur, uh, Shamaka, again, a certain type of ingredient that has to be put into the water. Um, anybody who's ever seen a, <clears throat> a, a detailed puja padati has different items to put in the padya, agya, achamaniya, and, and uh, shnaniya waters, right? So the waters for washing the feet, washing the hands, washing the mouth, and washing the body of the deity have different um, items that are put in them. So here he gives the list of the items uh, in, in text to 93, he gives the, um, the list of the items for washing the feet. So shamaka, durva, which means kusha, means the tips. You just take the tips and you put the tips in. Lotus, so essence of lotus or just lotus flower or lotus petals. And Vishnu Kranta, which is also, I believe another uh, holy grass uh, so or plant. Right, there's a there's a very famous mantra, Ashvakrante, Ratakrante, Vishnukrante, Vasundare, which is a mantra from the Veda, which is used for plowing the sacrificial uh, field. Before you set up a yagashala, you have to actually plow the field and make sure that there's no dirty items in the ground. Right, there might be bones or there might be some inauspicious items. So you're supposed to plow the field first with a plow. And uh, then, then actually, if you really want to make a proper yagashala, you have to plow it 
remove all the dirty items, the rocks or the whatever bad things that are, that are there. And then you have to sow grains. You have to, you have to grow some grains there. Then you have to have cows and horses um, uh, graze on the, on the, on the, on the, on the field and they leave cow dung and whatever. And then you have to, again, uh, prepare the field and then you can only um, make, make a yagashala if you want to make a really good yagashala. You have to make, so that's why it says ashprakrante ratakrante. Ashprakrante means the, 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 the krante means to, to, to walk or to go over. So the, the, the dirt or the earth, which a, which a horse has, has walked over, which a cow has walked over, which a chariot has gone over, right? I don't know whether that means you can drive a car over it, but a chariot, anyway, a chariot, right, has gone over. It becomes auspicious because of the touch of these animals. And, and the, the Lord's chariot, obviously, uh, you know, the Rathiatra, the Ratotsava going over it, that makes it also auspicious. So <coughs> that's, that's mentioned in the Vedic mantra, Ashvakrante, Ratakrante, Vishnukrante, Vasundare. And if Vishnu goes across it, Vishnukrante means the Rathiatra or the procession, processional deity. Um, okay, so so that, anyway, that's just, I'm sorry, that was as a side about the word Vishnu Kranta, which also means a type of, of, of uh, herb or herb which is put in the Padya water. Next, in, uh, in the next sloka, uh, it talks about Achaman water, water that's offered to the, the deity, or in this case, the pot, the, 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 the deity of the mantra in the pot. Um, it should be given with the Suda mantra, now it doesn't exactly say what the pseudo mantra is; it just gives it the letter va in uh, in uh, inverted commas here in Devanagari. So I'm not sure that we have to look that up. Uh, in the fa uh, so offered to the face. So, um, Achimana water has jati lavanga. Lavanga means cloves. Kola kola is a also a type of, of berry, kola berry, right? And uh, jati um, jati I believe is uh, nutmeg. So nutmeg, cloves. So this is what you put in Archimedes water. Nutmeg, cloves, and cola. Cola. It doesn't mean you offer Coca-Cola. It means this, uh, th th this cola is, uh, is, a, is a particular type of, of berry. Um, have flavoring. Okay, so cola flavoring. Cola flavoring for the Archimana. Interesting. Okay. So then 95 talks about the Argya. The Argya is usually uh, offered onto the head, or it can be Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so they offer the Padya with the Hridaya Mantra, the Achmana with the Suda Mantra, Suda means cleaning mantra, and then the Argya Mantra here, it says giving it with the Shiro Mantra. I see. Hridaya Maha. Shiro Swaha. Okay, so Shiro Swaha is the Shiro Mantra. So the Argya is to be given to the head of the deity, in this case, the pot, right? With the Shira Mantra, which means Shira Se Swaha. Uh, the Argya water, and it can also be used for washing the hands, right? Or just sprinkled on the head. Um, consists of sandalwood, flowers, uh, akshata, which means just rice, um, wheat. Wheat means wheat berries, you know, not flour, obviously, you know, not ground wheat, but uh, wheat berries. Um, Darba grass endings, the, the tips of Darba, again, tips of Kusha, and till, till or castor, says here castor, till means uh, sesame. Uh, sesame or, hmm. well, he, he doesn't understand uh, too much these things because the next, next thing he says in, in 96, he says sar, sarshapa, sarshapa means uh, mustard seed actually. Uh, and he puts in, he, he translates that as sesame, but that's not sesame, that's must, mustard, sashapa, durva grass. Uh, it is common for all devatas. Uh, then in the, in the, in the mouth, Madhuparaka is to be done. Okay, so he says, he's saying that he's suggesting perhaps in the, in the Madhuparaka uh, that you put uh, a little bit of sash, mustard, and mustard seed and a little bit of, uh, Durva grass. 
uh, for the Madhuparka. So here they're mentioning Madhuparka. Um, many, many systems, they don't use Madhuparka. Um, Madhuparka mean, is a mixture of um, milk, ghee, and, uh, um, sorry, yogurt and ghee and honey, usually. But it can also be the five, five things, milk, yogurt, ghee, honey, and sugar. So it can be either those five or it can be just those three, or it can be, you know, there are other um, different, different um, mixtures that make up Madhuparka. But Madhuparka is a, is a drink which is given to the, especially the bridegroom in a marriage ceremony. It's a welcome drink that you offer to anybody that comes to your house. You know, when somebody comes, when a visitor comes, you, you say, you know, would you like a seat, have a seat and have a, have a drink? Would you like a drink? You know, whatever you offer as, a, as an invitation drink, that's going to Madhu Parker. Of course, the word Madhu Parker contains the word Madhu, which means honey. So normally any, any reception drink that you give should be flavored with this, a little bit of honey. Okay, Shuddha Mantra, Madhu Parker. Oh, so here he says, Madhu Parker consists of ghee, curds, and honey. There you go. So according to them. Then uh, Achamaniya should be done in the same way. So he's going through the different Upacharas that have to be offered to the pot. Both shall be done to the idol by, by sandal, sandal water. Oh, sorry, both. He says both here, but it means bath. There's many spelling mistakes here. Bath shall be done to the, to the idol by um, sandal, pal, sandal water, right? So water with sandal with paste in it. Then wearing of clothes, and so if, we, if we're worshiping a pot and we're doing bath, it means we're just sprinkling the pot. We're not, we're not pouring water on the pot. So when we have a small deity or something like that, we can just sprinkle the, the pot or, or the small deity and, we, and it's considered like a bath and say the mantra for shnapayami or whatever we, we say. So both, uh, both shall be done to, with sandalwood, uh, bath shall be done with uh, sandalwood powder Sandalwood water, excuse me. Then wearing of clothes, so offering vastra. Upavita dharanam means offering the sacred thread and decorations and ornaments, which means a baranam, right? We have to offer the ornaments. After worshiping the devata by covered, putita, right? Now, um, this putita or covered worship is described in the 23rd chapter. So, Maybe I'll go and look at that later and let you know exactly what that is. But there's some, some certain type of worship that goes on here, which perhaps is a little secret. So it's called Putita. Uh, Putita Mula Mantra letters. And this can, uh, there's a, a secret way uh, or a covered way of, um, of doing the Mula Mantra Nyasa, right? Uh, uh, on the on the pot, several parts of the body shall be worshipped with sandalwood paste, chandan, camphor, and aguru. The suggested flowers are sandal, lotus, karavira, kumuda, tulsi, jati, ketaki, kalhara, champaka, utpala, kunda, mandara, punaga, patala, naga champa, right? Um, ara Aragmada, Kanikara, Parnti, uh, Nana Malika, Sogandika, Koranta, Palasha, Ashoka, Malika, Datura, um, Sajka, Bilva, Arjuna, and I think it says, it says Muni Pushpa here, but I think it's Mani Pushpa, and leaves. Okay, so there are certain, at this point in the puja, different flowers and different leaves are offered. This is normally done as archana with different names of the deity. Um, suggested flowers shall be used for worship. Fallen, unclean or untidy flowers should not be used. So the flowers have to be picked from the trees. They shouldn't fall on the ground and then be picked up. So, um, Except there's one exception to that is the parijata flower, which can also be picked up from the ground. But normally, that's because parijata flowers are considered always to be 
um, pure because they come from the heavenly planets. Lord Krishna went and got those that flower from Indra's garden for his wife, Satyabhama, who wanted that in Dwarka. Okay, so um, normally if the, if the flowers are unclean or if they've fallen down or if they're untidy, which means if the flower itself looks messy, you know, because somehow the, it's, been, it's been torn by insects or, bit, or bitten by insects, then it shouldn't be used. So the head of the, uh, the deity shall always be covered by flowers. And that means they're going to put on top of the flower. When they, you did this when you did the prana pratista, but we're going to offer it onto the head of the, the deity. Hands shall not be taken upon, hands shall not be taken on the head of the idol. I don't know what that means. With aguru, shira, gugula. Gugula is a type of uh, frankincense, right? Sugar, honey, and sandal with ghee fumes. Uh, shall shall be made under the idol. So, okay, this is describing the type of incense which is offered. Arti, with with bhatis made of ghee or oil with camphor. Bhatis means wicks. Okay, so then after the offering of incense, then is the offering of lamps with uh, wicks that are made with ghee or oil with camphor or with camphor shall be illuminated very well. Okay, so now after this, after the Dupa, the deeper, right, becomes the naivedya usually, comes the, the uh, offering of foodstuffs that it says here, piasam or boiled rice, boiled rice. Piasam normally means sweet rice, so it can be boiled with, uh, with, with, with just with sugar, or it can be also, you can add uh, with water and sugar, or it can also have, uh, normally we understand with, uh, with, um, with, with milk, Milk, milk rice with sugar or sweet rice. Um, it says here, okay, so off a of piasa, uh, and then it says a good pickle, so some type of pickle, sugar, bananas shall be offered with ghee, right? These, uh, these are, these, uh, be between these hospitalities, water shall be given separately for each hospitality. Okay, so what he's saying here is that in between, in between each uh, a service or each upachara that's being offered in this particular si si uh, method of puja, we offer achamana in between each one, right? So it may even be in the Sri Vaishnava system of worship at every section, different section, there's five or six sections in Sri Vaishnava worship, which are called asanas, which start from mantra asana, uh, shnana asana, uh, alankara asana, um, boja asana, uh, Purnamantrasana and Payankasana, right? So, so at each at each stage we offer Argya, Padya, and Achamaniya at the beginning of each one. So uh, here, what he's saying is is not uncommon at all um, that Achamana, at least Achamana, if not Achamana, Padya, and and uh, and Argya are offered at uh, at each stage. Now, normally in Smarta Pujas and in most Vaishnava. Uh, Sampradayas, they usually offer Padya first, then Argya, then Achamaniya. In uh, particularly in Pancharatra in Sri Vaishnavism, they offer it in a little different order. They offer first of all Argya, then Padya, then Achamaniya. So Padya, Argya, Achamaniya, normally for, for, for people in Sri Vaishnavas, Argya, Padya, Achamaniya. Okay, that's the order. All right, so continuing on. Uh, verse 110, Avarna Devatas. Avarna Devatas are the Devatas which are situated around a central deity. So um, it might be talking about doing, uh, installing more pots here, or it might be talking about um, simply meditating on them, the different associate deities of the main deity of the mantra uh, being worshipped. So Avarna Devatas shall be worshipped from Anga, from Anga and to Lokapal Devatas. Lokapal De Devatas are also called Dik Devatas for the different directions, starting in the east. So the place of the Anga Puja is Kesharas. Okay, so this is also talk what we're talking about here is, remember we've got this pot and the pot is on the mandala. So there are Avarana Devatas on the mandala also, right? So bringing it back to the example of Chakrabja Mandala, when you have a Chakrabja Mandala, you have different gates and you have different, uh, different. there's the, there's the Kanaka Chetra, 
there's the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the the Nabi, the uh, the um, you have uh, different things. You have the Shoba, the Upashoba, the Arda Shoba. You have the different. Uh, these are different sections of the Chakrabja Mandala. Okay, so what will happen is that on different in different places, also in the different directions in the Chakrabja Mandala, there are, for instance, Jaya Vijaya, Chanda Prachanda, Bala Prabala. Data Vidata, these are there are Asta uh, 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 Dwarpalakas, there are these door doorkeepers in the eight, the, in the four, the four gates of Vaikuntha they have, because it's a conception of Vaikuntha, and so there are different personalities in different parts of the mandala, different different forms of, of, of Srima Narayana, and then there are at the different gates, there are the gatekeepers, you know, Jai Vijay, Chan Prachand, etc. Bal Prabal, like that. Then there's also sometimes there's uh, Shankaniti and Padmanidi, there's all these different associates. Okay, so that's for Chakrabhja Mandala. But in, uh, in here, we have a different mandala. We have a simple self, Sarvatobhadra Mandala, on which the pot is being placed. So there are, there are those simple Lokapalas or Dikpalas, Indra, Agni, Vayu, Kuvera, like that, in different directions. So it says here the younger Puja is uh, Keshras. Uh, Ridai, etc., shall be worshipped in Agnaya, Nairitya, Vayava, Ishanya. Okay, so going around. So in front of the in front of the idol, I'm assuming when he keeps saying idol here, but I think he means the the pot that's on the mandala. Okay, which is the which is the focus of our puja uh, for the for um, worship of the mantra of the deity of the mantra. Right, so in front of the in front of the uh, in front of the deity, Netram eyes Ash, Astra Devatas in the directions, Anga Anga Devatas having snow, crystal, blue indigo, black, and red colors respectively, bearing the Varda and Abhaya Mudras, goddess shall be worshipped afterwards. Okay, so he's talking about. There are, there are these different devatas uh, which are imagined there and the full list is not exactly given. But again, they also are all meditated upon as having the Abhaya and Varda mudras and are, are of different colors. So we really have to go into depth here and, we, and if we really wanna know how to do it, we have, to, we have to make a list of these different devatas. Then it says the Kalpalata Avarna devatas in, in the order. I don't know what that means. So in the end, the Lokapals with their um, Parishads, so the Lokapals also have Parishads. They also, these Devatas in the different directions, they also have, uh, have associates. Suppose it is for Shakti Puja, each one of, the, each one of uh, them beginning with Shakti Parishadaya Namaha, with their weapons, and with their jati, right, beginning in the east, I have to be worshipped in order. Okay, so here he's going to uh, list them. He's going to list them now. So the Lokapals are Indra in the east, Agni, Yama, in Agni in the southeast, Yama in the south, Rakshasas in the southwest, Varuna in the west, Vayu, Vayu, Vayu in the Northwest, Soma in the north, Ishana, Ishana is uh, up, and Adi Shesha is down, and Brahman is in all directions. Okay, so the colors of the Lokapals are yellow, red, white, coffee colored, white, 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 and red. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there's eight. Right, the 10 weapons of the Lokapalas are Vajra, Shakti, Danda, Asi, Pasa, Ankusha, Gada, Sula, Chakra, and Padma. Right, so these are different weapons of the Lokapalas. Some of these, some of them we know, some of them we don't know. The Vajra is a thunder pole, the Shakti, I'm not sure exactly. Danda is a stick, like a, maybe a club, uh, well, a club comes later, Gada. Uh, Asi, Pasha is a noose. Uh, Ankusha is a particular type of um, a, a particular type of thing which is used for with a, a like a, a stick with a 
a spike and a, and a hook on it, which is used for controlling elephants, ankusha. Uh, gada is a, is a club. Shula is like a, a, like a pike, uh, a, a, a trident. A tree sula is a, is a pike. A, a, a sula would just be a spear, for, perhaps, but a, a tree sula is a spear with three points or a, a trident. Uh, chakra, we know what a chakra is, it's a disc. Uh, Padma is a lotus. Okay, so now the colors of the weapons, respectively, this Vajra Shakti Danda, etc., are yellow, white, white, sky blue, white, black, blue, and red. Okay, so after, thus after, this is for your meditation on, on them. Uh, so you can see here, sometimes there's very elaborate description. There's some. There's a there's a, a short description of what you have to actually do to do the worship, but there's a very elaborate description of the ingredients that need to be got together, right? To to put in the different um, waters, fragrant waters, and there's also a very elaborate description of the meditation because puja is, if nothing else, is is a meditation, and we have to. Be very uh, it's very important that we know what we're meditating upon so that's why they give all the the uh the colors the colors so even when we even when we do puja with the om namo narayana mantra in in pancharatra each syllable of the mantra has a different color that we meditate on a different shape and it's the same thing also with the with the chakras in the body uh they have different colors they have different shapes and they have different bij mantras and they have different uh, meanings. Okay, so, um, so the idea is it's all a meditation. We, 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 it has to be, you have to meditate on those things. So thus, after completing the worship up to Naivedyam or the food offering, the Yajamana, meaning the Acharya, shall produce Agni. He should make fire and keep the fire upon the standila. The standila is normally, the word standila is used for a fire pit, a place where you're going to have the fire. It's either a flat thing or it's a pit in with, with, a three, with three tiers around it usually, it's called mekalas. That's also described in the Bhagavatam about the mekalas. Mekalas means, the word mekala means a belt in Sanskrit. So these three tiers are there around the fire <clears throat> the place where you're going to put the fire. Now, sometimes the, 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 the level of the fire is above the ground level. Sometimes it's at the ground level and sometimes it's under the ground level. They might dig uh, down and make a very big deep pit so they can put big logs in. So there's a whole, a whole science about, about different sizes of fires. And we, this was also given in Hari Bhakti Vilas in the second Vilas. It described about if you're going to do a diksha, depending on how many oblations you're going to put in the fire, the word for oblation in Sanskrit is ahuti. So how many ahutis you're going to put in the fire, <clears throat> you're, you need to have a bigger pit, a bigger, a bigger fire pit. Okay, and then there were some rules about that, which were described in Hari Bhakti Vilas. Okay, so here comes a bit about the fire. So he's finished, seems like he's finished worshiping the pot worshiping the deity in the pot. Now he's got turning his attention to the fire. So when it says he should produce fire, usually when it says in a text that he should produce fire, it means that he should make what's called balagni. Now balagni means there are different types of fire. There's baby fire or balagni. Then there's young fire. Then there's old fire. So old fire normally is the fire that comes from a Brahmin's house. And the Brahmin has kept that sacrificial fire for his whole life. Or at least his grihasta life, and it's, it's it's kept from the from the uh, from the fire from his um, marriage all the way to his cremation, and that fire every day is 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 we offer in the morning and the evening we offer oblations into it as opasana homam. I think we discussed this, and then every every fifteen days on the pratama we have to do the what's called stalipaka, and we have to feed it some more, but otherwise we keep it. Many people keep it in the corner of the room, in a in a in a clay pot, in, which is full of cow dung, and they keep it there as a burning ember. And they take it out every day, and then they they offer something to it every morning, every evening, and put it back. Otherwise, the person will have a special yagshala in his house, which is a separate room where he keeps the different, either Vedic or smarter 
uh, um, uh, homokundas. The, uh, the main homokunda in a house is called the Garhapatya fire. There are different fires, uh, uh, Avasatya, Ahavaniya, Garhapatya, Dakshinagni, and they have different shapes also. So the one which is Dakshinagni is in the south, because Dakshina means south, and it's uh, bow shaped, or, or sometimes it's called half moon, or moon shaped, half moon shaped, Arda Chandra. So it looks like a half moon or a bow, you know, a, a, a bow. Um, that's the Dakshinagni. The first one is the is the Garhapatya, the the uh, which is Garhapatya has to do with the house. Griha or Grihasta or Garha means house. So the 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 household fire, which is a uh, smarter fire, smarter agni, not a shrouta agni. It's a it's a smarter agni for use in uh, smarter ceremonies. Uh, and the other one is a shrouta agni, which is used for shrouta ceremonies or Vedic ceremonies. Right, so this uh, Avasatya, Ahavaniya, Dakshinagni, Garapatya, these are different fires. And there's, um, uh, there may be some more, there's some more also, but anyway, that's, that's it. Okay, so he, he, he's, he's wanting to make a, a baby fire, so he, he uses a fire drill, which is called an Arni Manta. An Arni Manta is a, is a wooden drill, fire drill, that they chant certain mantras and they pull the rope and uh, twist the, the drill and it creates friction between two pieces of wood and they get hot coals from that and make fire. That's baby fire, that's balagni. That's, so normally when it says produce fire, it means do it that way, do it that way. The other way you can do it is you can bring that fire from a, a, a person's house where a person's feeding the fire and it's a baby, it's a either shrouta agni or, or smarta agni. Here we probably will use smarta agni not a shot agni, but bring it from that person's, uh, that Brahmin's house, that's an old fire. In between, you can also make fire in other ways with uh, magnifying glass from the sun, taking the uh, power from the sun and creating fire that way. That's in between, in between. So we say young fire, but not a, not a baby fire. Okay, so here it's saying produce the fire and then keep the fire on the standila. So, there's a whole system of Agni Mukha or of setting up the sacrificial fire. And we've gone through it before, but maybe we haven't um, um, videoed it or, or, or done a video on it or recorded it. But we could go through it again sometime and we can record it, but we don't want to go through it here. We just want to note the fact that, that uh, he's going to place the fire. When you place the fire, there's other things to do before you place the fire and after you place the fire. That is called Agni Mukha or Kushandika. It's called Kushandika sometimes. Agni Mukha means, uh, Agni means fire and Mukha means a mouth. So we're creating a mouth of Vishnu, the mouth of God uh, in, this, in the form of fire so that we can feed God. We can feed the Supreme Lord through the, through the, uh, through the manifestation of fire. So the other term is uh, Kushandika, which means laying of Kushagras because there's a certain uh, part of the ceremony where you lay Kushagras around the fire um, that's called Paristaranam, and you put four on each side like that. Okay, so anyway, those are the two terms. They're, they're, it, that's the whole uh, discussion in itself. So we won't go into there, but this is the main thing. The main thing is you just, and there's Vedic way to do it, and there's a tantric way to do it as well. Okay, so that what you do is you just take the fire and you put it in the middle of the pit, the fire pit or the stun dealer, and you put the fire there. So when you put the fire there, usually what people do is they just take the fire and they just go Om Bhur Subaha Iti Agnim Pratistapya. Om Bhur Subaha Iti Agnim Pratistapya. And they put the fire there. Okay. So, he, so continuing on, Vaishvadeva shall be done in that fire after doing the needed samskaras. Okay. So specifically, specifically in tantric uh, homas, uh, there's a lot of people, what they do is they do the samskaras for the fire. Now, specifically, if you've got a young fire, a baby fire, you have to do the samskaras for it, right? So because it's a baby, <clears throat> you have to do the different samskaras for the fire. There's a personality of the fire and you have to offer samskaras to it. What you're doing is you're just simply saying some mantras and you're putting the mantras for the different samskaras and you're just putting a little G in the fire each time you say that, right? Okay. 
So that's what he means by doing the sum scars for the fire. There's a procedure for doing that if you really want to do that. Most people are not doing that these days, but if, in case you want to be absolutely uh, correct on how to do it, you do it. So, um, Vaishwadeva, Vaishwadeva is also one of the Panchamaha Yagyas that a Grihastha has to do every day. So there are five sacrifices which a Grihastha has to do every day. Vaishwadeva is one of them. Before you eat, you have to offer the food that you offer to God, the prasadam food. You have to offer a little bit into the fire in, with different mantras for different personalities, the, 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 the different devatas, and also for different other personalities. Okay, there are several different ways of doing um, are doing Vaishvadeva. <clears throat> so obviously you have to do it according to your sutra and your gotra, the way that you do it. Um, that's a whole other discussion about how to do Vaishvadeva. We could have a discussion about that if anybody's interested, but most people are not doing Vaishvadeva much anymore. There are some people who do do it still. Okay. So it says here that the Acharya, he has to go through the Vaishvadeva first. He has to do the Vaishvadeva. Uh, and then he has to also do, the, uh, after after he does the samskaras for the fire, then he has to do the Vaishwadeva yagya. Particular devata shall be identified with the flower, with sandals and sandalwood and, and flower petals. Okay, so this is also uh, commonly understood. Uh, those persons who are, who are familiar with doing, performing the worship in Sakriya Sardipika, the, the fire ritual. Uh, it also mentions naming the fire, giving a specific name to the fire. The fire is identified with a particular devata, and so we could say, you know, Vishnu Nam Agni Agacha Agni Tvam Vishnu Namasi, that uh, this fire is Vishnu, you, this fire is Vishnu, or Shiva, or, or Durga. Here, remember here, this is a very general agama, so <clears throat> it could be uh, different devatas. They're going to describe in the rest of the, the book, they're going to describe different devatas. So it's not only a book for Vishnu worship. So then the sacrifice is to be done with the Mula Mantra with high tone Omkara. Okay. High tone Omkara means that the, the either means that the Omkara is going to be in a high, in a high pitch or normally, normally there certain Vedic Mantras will be chanted in a low pitch. Here it's going to be chanted in a higher tone or, or more, more loud, let's say, uh, and he's going to do the, the, he's going to offer the Mula Mantra as Ahutis, he's going to offer oblations into the fire of ghee with the Mula Mantra, and it says here with high tone Omkara, with Vyariti, right, so Vyariti in, in brackets here he puts in the, in the, uh, in Devanagari, Om Bhu Swaha, Om Bhuva Swaha, Om Suva Swaha, Om Bhurvava Swaswaha, right? So that is called Mahavyarati Homa, right? Um, with the material Payasa. Now, this is also described in Hari Bhakti Vilas. In Hari Bhakti Vilas, it says we should be offering with the Mula Mantra into the fire with Payasa or sweet rice, sweet rice into the fire. So that's what the Diksha Homa is, is offering sweet rice into the fire, into the mouth of the Lord. So exactly the type of sweet rice. I think it was stated as, I'm not sure if it was stated with milk sweet rice in, in, in Haribakti Vilas, but anyway, it's a type of rice which is sweet. And we don't know if it's, it's palpaisam is what they say in Tamil, if it's, if it's got uh, milk in it, pal means milk, or it could be um, shakara pongal, which is a type of, of rice with just sugar and not with ghee. Payasa and ghee, ahuti, so payasa and ghee. Okay, so when you're offering, what it's really, and it says to do 25 of these. So with the Mula Mantra, you're offering 25 times. Now you have a two spoons, you have the Shruka and the Shruva. The Shruva is the small one, the Shruva is the big one, right? There's a big one, which has a big uh, container like spoon that you can put large things in. So what you do is on your right hand, you keep on your right hand, you keep the Shruva and the left hand, you keep the Shruk. You have somebody else sitting on your left hand, uh, who is going to take some of the payasa, either either a lump of it or pour it into the, the, the shruk, and you're going to then offer with every ablation 25 times with the mula mantra, you're going to offer both the spoons and the fire, right? So you're going to offer ghee and 
he and fire some in with fire. That's usually what would, what because otherwise sometimes people put put uh, put the uh, the charu or the charu means boiled rice or the um, or the uh, payasam in the sweet rice in the in the shruk and then they spoon some with the little spoon the shuva they spoon some ghee and they put some on top and then they just pour it in with the with the hand like that. So sometimes that you know they use both hands and sometimes they use one hand after putting the ghee on the, on the on the top of it. Okay, so, so that's 25 ahutis like that. After the sacrifice, the devata shall be invite, identified back to the idol, meaning the meaning the, the, the pot, I believe, kept on the pitam, which is the pitam is where they've kept the, the, the mandala. And the existing fire may be sent forth. Okay, so after you've invoked the deity, <laughs> again from the pot you know you could do it again from your heart but from the pot to the fire and worship it in the fire then back to the pot that's what he's saying the existing fire may be sent forth that means val you do valediction of the deity in the fire or visajana by the existing havis the term havis means anything that you put into the fire an offering Piasa and ghee sweet rice and ghee Bali shall be given to the Parshada Devatas. So Parshada Devatas are a, a Varna Dev, like a Varna Devatas for any deity has got <coughs> mem members, members of their uh, entourage. Like if we have Radha Krishna, they have eight gopis around them, you know, or, the, or Krishna might have eight coward boys around them. So Bali, Bali means that you have to identify where those Parshara Devatas are and you have to give them each a little bit of sweet rice and a little bit of ghee. And you have to place it around the main deity. So there may be places <coughs> either on the mandala or outside the mandala <coughs> where we have to do Bali. So it also says you have to use flour and flowers and sandal here. So probably you're invoking the Parsha of Devatas with, with flour and sandal, and then you're offering the Bali of the Piasam with ghee. So not all of the ghee and not all of the ghee and the Piasam is used in the fire. It has to be kept, some of it. Now the food Naivedyam shall be sent forth. And once again, Pancho Pacharas, which means five Upacharas or services, Ganda, Pushpa, Dupa, Deepa, and Naivedya are offered. Then afterwards showing Chatra, right? Or the umbrella and Chamra fan. Pan or Tambula, which means the, the betel leaf and betel nuts are to be offered with pieces of camphor. So just a little bit of camphor, right? The Mula Mantra shall be then recited 1000 times, Japa, and the same shall be done Samarpana to the Devata. Hmm. Samarpana to the Devata. That should be offered as a an offering to the Devata, to the to particular deity of the of the of the mantra. The water pop having a pipe. The water pop having a pipe. Maybe you've got a what we call a karaka, which is a uh, uh, or a gindi, which is a pot with a with a spouted with a spouted with a spout, you know, spouted water pot shall be kept in the in the northeast ishanya kona right it is to be decorated by gold and clothes and uh, and a devata shall be assumed in the, in that pot uh, pot sitting on sitting on a lion bearing a sword and a ketaka okay so i'm not sure ishanya ishanya kona usually is um if I'm not mistaken, Shiva. But but anyway, it sounds like it sounds like Davy here sitting on the lion. But anyway, uh, it's not exactly clear. In the west, in the west, Astra Devata is to be assumed, right? On on a higher uh, sitting sitting in a high place 
then taking the part and assuming that the locopiles have heard the order of, the, of God to protect, protect with the Astra Mantra, it shall be kept in the place as it was. Once again, worship with God, Stira Asana. Hmm. So it sounds like there's a part in which you invoke Sudoshana or Astra, right? And then you use that for protecting the other part, which you just worship with the, with the Lord in it. Charu or boiled rice shall be made from cow's milk in, in cow's milk upon a fire. It says here upon a fire having some scars. So perhaps you have to actually, charu usually means rice that's cooked on the sacrificial fire. Right, but nowadays many people they just cook it in the kitchen and they use it. But for instance, in when I said before, every two weeks on, on Pratama, you have to do the Stalipaka. In the Stalipaka um, ceremony, you have to cook the, the rice on the sacrificial fire itself. So that's what he's saying here that you make the chara with, um, you make uh, sweet rice, mixing rice and, and, and milk and cooking it over the sacrificial fire. Uh, but after you do some scars to the sacrificial fire with the Astra Mantra in a new copper vessel, rice shall be put 15 handfuls, 15 handfuls of rice shall be put with Mula Mantra and then Astra Mantra Japa, and then Astra Mantra Japa has to be done. So I have to chant the Astra Mantra, Omastraya uh, Pat, and we have to do the Japa of that for protection. And this charu, we don't know exactly where this, what, what happens to this, this charu, which is, it sounds like it's also put into the sacrificial fire, but uh, we just did the visarjan of the, of, the, of the fire. So I don't understand where this goes. The mouth of, and this is made, this is again offered to the, it seems like it's again offered to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the, the main pot, the Maha Kumbha on the mandala. The mouth of the vessel shall be cleaned, then covered, covering it by the Kavacha Mantra, the Yajamana or Acharya faces east, shall cook the Charu with the Mula Mantra. So he's got to cook the Charu on the sacrificial fire with using the Mula Mantra. Abhigaranam, Abhigarana, putting a little ghee on the Charu, right, shall be done by the Shruva with the Mula Mantra. Okay, so while he's cooking, while he's cooking rice mixed with milk on the sacrificial fire, he has to take the small sacrificial spoon, the Shruva, and put a little ghee onto the Charu while it's cooking with the Mula Mantra. Then by the Kavacha Mantra, the vessel is to be kept upon, I guess, kept upon the fire. Okay, so before he puts it on the fire, he has to add some with the Mula Mantra. The mandala, hmm, the mandala upon which the kusha grass uh, has been spread with the astra mantra, that charu should be divided into three parts after it's cooked, obviously. And one portion should be kept for the deity, for God, uh, which could mean the, 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 uh, the pot on the mandala, right? Another part, uh, another one part for the sacrificial fire, and the last part is for the actual acharya. So here they've made this sweet rice. They've made the sweet rice on the sacrificial fire. One part is going to be offered to the pot on the mandala. One part is going to be offered to the uh, into the sacrificial fire, and one part is going to be kept and given to the acharya. He shall eat that part with his student after having done Achimana and then do Achimana, right? So, so he should eat first. The Acharya should, eat, should take his third of the Charu and he should eat some of that and he should give, the, give some of it to the student that he's initiating. The student selected for this purpose shall do Achimana then the teacher shall give a toothbrush of, of a Tala me measurement. Uh, not exactly sure, but a Tala seems to mean 
the, the between the thumb and the end of the end of the uh, middle finger. So you get a stick like this from uh, some sort of tree that has milky sap. And uh, this is going to be a, a toothbrush, which the, the, uh, the Acharya is going to give to the student after he, I guess, after he, first of all, he does Achimana, the student does Achimana. Second of all, second of all, the student um, is given this toothbrush and, and brushes his teeth. Uh, in my experience, in Chakrabja Mandala Diksha, this happens on the, the day before and the toothbrush is, or, or the morning after the day, the first day of the, of the initiation ceremony. And then the student throws the toothbrush in a certain direction and they see where, how it lands and they do prize to the Homa for that. But anyway, we'll see what it says here. So shall give the, the, the teacher shall give a toothbrush of one tala measurement, which is defined as the measurement between the the thumb and the end of the middle finger when the hand is spread with the Hridaya Mantra, Om Hridaya Yenamaha, he should give the toothbrush uh, to the student. And that's made of made from the wood of milky trees, milky sap trees. So then the student, after brushing his teeth with the toothbrush, so how do you brush your teeth with a wooden toothbrush? If it's a stick, first thing you do is you put it between the front teeth and you bite you bite, a, you bite around, around the, 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 uh, the stick, and so, so then you peel the bark off. Then you take the middle part and you put it between the molars and you squ squash it between, uh, 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 between, you bite it between the molars until it becomes a, a type of a brush. Then you use it to brush your teeth. After you finish brushing your teeth with it like that, then you have to take this twig and you bend it so that uh, one side of it cracks and the other side of it stays up uh, 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 like a, a round shape like this and you use it to scrape the tongue. Then you throw it away. That's, a, that's the method of, of uh, traditionally doing the, this type. So it has to be somewhat of a fresh stick and it has to be from a, a sap a tree, a tree that gives, has sap. Um, Shilla Prabhupada used to use eucalyptus uh, twigs but you could th there are specific uh, Indian trees that they they make uh, toothbrushes from anyway so the student Mango. after brushing is yeah mango mango tree isn't it it works okay good I was reading that in one pre yoga that they use oh good mango tree, tree could be used then okay then the student after brushing the teeth shall wash the stick so wash the stick after he uses it and then throw it away so Adivas is defined. So then there's Adivas. Okay, Adivas is, Adivas means a preliminary ceremony. Anything that which is a preliminary ceremony, specifically the day before the main ceremony is called Adivas. Okay, so we're familiar perhaps with Sadhguru Sadhupika, there's a thing called Adivas. So here it says Adivas is defined as when the teacher sleeps in the night with the student. Okay, so we're in the Yagshala. We've done all these things the first day. This, is, this happens in the evening of the first day and it's all finished. And, this, and, and uh, they've, uh, they've uh, taken, they've eaten the sweet rice, their portion of the sweet rice, the teacher and the student. And then they lay down on Kushagras mats and they sleep in the Yagshala. They sleep in the Yagshala together. And uh, so it says here, the teacher sleeps in the in, in the night with the student who has done Achamana and Sika Bandhana. Right, so the student has to do Achamana and he has to do Sika Bandhana. He has to tie Sika. I don't know why it wouldn't be tied before, but anyway, on a Darba mat on the Vedi. The Vedi means the sacrificial platform of the Yagashala. Okay, so that's the end of <clears throat> that's the end of Patala 4. And we still didn't get to the point about. We still don't get the point about the different uh, the different forms of initiation because we haven't finished the first part. So we haven't finished the Kriyavati uh, Diksha. So um, 
I think uh, it's going to take a little bit longer to look at to look at the Kalavati, Varnamayi, and Vedamayi because we haven't even finished the the first one, right? We've just finished the first day of the first one, but it's very similar. It's very very similar. In, uh, in if we if we look at Hari Bhakti Vilas, it's almost exactly the same as what is done in Hari Bhakti Vilas, right? So um, probably we should probably stop here. Are there any questions about the the first day of the Kriyavati? Uh, oh yeah, that's nice. So in uh, Dhirindhai is just saying in Vilapa Kusum Kusumanjali, Raghunath Das Goswami offers a mango twig to Sri Radha in his Siddha Deya. Nice. Uh, uh, some people have a reaction to mango. Hmm. Yeah, something to consider. Yep. Good point. So we have to be careful about that. So any other questions specifically about this and uh, this particular part? And uh, I think, let me just have a look and see how far, how much further we have to, we have like one, two, three. We have to do to explain these different types of initiation. I think the other types of initiation are much shorter. Oh, okay. So, so in actual fact, it seems like, it seems like, uh, the next, if we finish the next, uh, the next chapter, which is only about, another 14, 14 uh, short pages, all right, then we'll finish all four. So he spent a lot of time, just like, just like Gohobada spent a lot of time in Hari Bhakti Vilas explaining the Kriyavati method. The other three methods are, are, are mentioned, the, the end of the Kriyavati and the other three are mentioned in the next in the next 14 pages. It's all very, very detailed stuff, but it's, it's, interesting, it's interesting to me because it brings up a lot of different little uh, details about ritualism that, uh, that we can learn about. You know, you, you understand that a, like an, a person who does this, an Acharya who does this particular type of ritual has to be well-versed in in all of these minor things and all of these details. So that's why that's why when you when you read it gives us it gives more meaning to the to the whole idea when we read that the guru has to be really qualified in the Agama Shastras. He has to know the Shastras. So he not only does he have to know the philosophy and the doctrines and things like that, but he has to understand the practices in detail. You know, otherwise, if you don't understand the practices in detail, you can't do a ritual like this. You know, this to write this out for for somebody who's doesn't understand any of it would be a huge, huge um, effort. You know, can you can you imagine? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say something simple. Can you imagine also what it would be like to uh, gather all the ingredients necessary back in those days? You know, whereas, I mean, I, I know that they were growing a lot of these things locally, but, you know, it wasn't all just in one place, you know. Uh, maybe. I, I mean, like yeah. like today, you could, in today in India, you just go to a puja shop and they have everything. Yeah. You just go with, you have your, you have your, you have your list of things that you need for your ceremony and you just go there and just say, okay, I want this, I want this, I want this and this. They have it all there and they just give it to you. Yeah, but that's why I'm saying, like back in that that day, you know, you had to go and collect everything yourself. I'm sure. I, or do you um, think they had some? <laughs> well, you know, you know, that's what that's what that's what the the Brahmins they just they they say to the they would say to the sponsor, you know, mm -hmm. the rich, which the the yajamana, they'll say, hey, we need to do this sacrifice, and the sponsor says, okay, give me a list of what you need, and he gets it. Mm -hmm. Just like we do today, yeah, yeah. But I, I do understand the point. But but you know, it's it's mm -hmm. usually not that difficult. Um, it, no, you know, the person who's expert at doing these rituals, he knows what he needs, and he just makes a list and gives it to the to the other people to get. 
or he goes and gets it in the market, you know? I mean, even thousands of years ago, they had markets, they had, uh, mm -hmm. they had people who were growing all these things and getting all these things together. So you just had to go and get them. I mean, it's, you know, today it's, today you can go to a puja shop, you can get everything in one place. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you had to go to different shops in the market and get different things. And, you know, you probably had some paraphernalia, or you had your sacrificial spoons, you had your pots, you had, you had, you knew how to make the mandala, you had the dyes and things for, for you know, you had a lot of the uh, simple things too like um, things that are found in the kitchen spices and, um, and uh, flavors and fragrances that, that are natural. The flowers, you, in Sri Ranga, there's a whole street for flowers. You know, there's, a, there's one street which is called Satravidi because all these um, Satara Sri Vaishnavas live there who are non-Brahmins, but, but they have specific duties and they have these people who are in, in their family lineage, they've been growing, growing flowers and making garlands for generations, many generations. And you just go to that, you go to that, I mean, if you want to get a flower garland, you just go to that street. And the, every single shop in the street is selling flower garlands, you know, huge flower garlands. And you can get, you know, get Tulsi by the, by the barrel full, you know, I mean, you know, they, they, you know they've got all the flowers segregated and, you can go. You can go buy ready-made flower garlands, or you can go there and you can say, "I want loose flowers," or you can go there and you can say, "I want a flower garland, but I want it to be made of this." Like I want, I want tulsi, and then I want jasmine, and then I want, uh, you know, uh, marigold, and then I want uh, roses, and I want it like that. Make me one like that, and they'll just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got it all. You know, you say, "I want this, 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 this," and you point to all the different flowers and put them all together to make a garland for me, or Give me this one, or, or you tell them, or you, you can also tell them I'm doing uh, worship of Devi, or I'm doing worship of Shiva, or I'm doing worship of Vishnu, and they'll give you the best flowers for those particular deities. These guys know everything; <coughs> they know everything, and they, they, and they, and they don't, um, they don't do it like we do with the with a with a needle and thread. You know, they mm -hmm. they do it. They they wrap it all together with with a banana stalk. They have this banana leaf stalk. And they wrap, they tie it all together with banana stalks and things. So that they, 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 you know. Now, interestingly enough, here in here in Hawaii, they also have a a, a long heritage of of making garlands and using flowers and things. And and if you go to Honolulu, downtown Honolulu in Chinatown, there are these shops where they they make all the garlands and things like that. So you go there and you say, okay, my my son or daughter is graduating college or something like that. So, oh, you need this type of garland, you know, for them when they graduate. And, or, or you say, okay, my, my friend is retiring. So I want to give her a, a, a garland for her head and a garland for her neck. And it should be, I want this specific type of uh, gardenia, or I want this ginger, you know, Melanesian ginger, or I want this. And, and they're all different ways that they, that they make the flowers and 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 uh, <laughs> you know they they've got a whole system here too like that. So the whole flower flower thing and the flower um, you know it's all discussed in Hari Bhakti Vilas in in the seventh Vilas. The whole chapter is all about flowers. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's not only about loose flowers and loose flowers and leaves also. We don't use leaves. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says. Patram Pushpam, Palam, offer me a fruit. So there's so many types of fruits we can offer. Offer me a flower, so many flowers, right? And then there are forbidden flowers also for particular deities, for, for Vishnu, there's forbidden, like uh, I have a lot of hibiscus on my property and hibiscus is supposed to be forbidden for Vishnu worship, for Vaishnava worship. But the Sri Vaishnavas have a, an exception for that. Uh, Vedanta Deshika has mentioned that you can actually use hibiscus in one of his stotras. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Tirunarayan, my Sanskrit teacher, told me that you can actually use. I was very happy to hear that because I've got lots of um, hibiscus here. So different flowers for different purposes at different seasons and different uh, things. And it's all mentioned in Haribhakti Vilas. And, at the same, and then there's also in the puja, there's a, se there's a, there's a section where you offer different flowers. 
with different names of the Lord and then offer different leaves. So we don't, he all, Krishna also says, offer me leaves. Normally we think, oh, okay, we're offering Tulsi leaves. But he, he not only likes Tulsi leaves, of course he likes Tulsi leaves the, the best, but he likes other leaves too. There's all these other leaves, you know. So all flowers, all leaves, all fruits, you know, these are all things which can be, which are purely sattvic too, because leaves, fruits, and flowers, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to kill anything to get those things, right? At the same time, we were discussing offline uh, uh, also that there might be some things where, uh, where we have to offer something which is uh, not usually understood as, a, as, as an ahimsa product, right? Like, for instance, um, musk. Musk is Lord Ranganathi in Sri Rangam. He wears a kasturi tilaka. Kasturi means musk. Kasturi tilaka. His tilak is made of musk. Musk comes from the, from the from an animal, from musk ox. To get the musk, you have to, you know, kill the animal, basically. So, you know, there's also this other uh, pulugu, which comes from a civet cat. You know, there's a animal and it comes from that you know so uh, there's some similar things there's a there's a thing called pulugu there's a there's musk there's you know the deity the deity the deities all wear clothes made of silk right you know polished silk really nice silk in order to have that really beautiful silk the we have to kill silkworms yeah but there is a type of silk also that you can use Called ahimsa silk or matka silk in India, where they let the they let the worm get out of the the, uh, the cocoon, so it makes a hole in the cocoon. So that means that the silk strands are broken in small small. And they're small. They're not. You can't take one. You can't make one cocoon into one long strand of silk. It comes in little strands because it's been broken. So they have to tie the strands together. So there's a lot of knots in it. So it seems it's like khadi. It's very it's very khadi cloth is very rough. But so uh, I used to have a dhoti when I was a pujari uh, in Iskon. I did have a dhoti made of matka silk, of ahimsa silk. But you see in India, mostly in South India, you see most of the pujaris wearing cotton. And even the deities are wearing cotton in many of the temples in South India. And that's, you know, that's of course, uh, cotton is of course a product of just simply the plant. So there's no animal, uh, no animals have been hurt. In the making of these deity clothes or these pujari clothes, so so we have we have certain things are accepted and certain things are not accepted, um, and and so, some things are accepted by some groups and not accepted by other groups in terms of flowers, in terms of fruits, in terms of leaves, in terms of also um, products that may involve um, some injury to some animal. Yeah. Yeah, Swami, I was also just thinking how these Agamas are describing the process of mystical yoga. And now for this reading, I understood why, why this knowledge yeah. is also important because, you know, you, you also need to know about these chakras and nadis and things. Yeah, this is all the internal, the internal, uh, the esoteric meaning of the rituals, right? We don't realize, but there's so much, so much esoteric meaning to the rituals. And, and that's why in Pancharatra, there are four sections. There's Jnana, Yoga, Kriya, and Charya. Jnana, Yoga, Kriya, and Charya. Jnana and Yoga have to do with the knowledge of what's happening in this material world. As I described in the beginning of Sh uh, Sharada Tilaka, there's 25 chapters in Sharada Tilaka because there are 25 elements in the material world. And so it's all about Sankhya. It's all, it's, it, it all has this, this, these meanings. So Jnana has to be there. And uh, Yoga is, uh, once you understand the process of creation and destruction and maintenance and this material world and the different principles, then how, at, how that is to be meditated upon within the body and externally, right? So these things which are going on in the body with the chakras and things like that are a reflection of what the microcosm of the body is a reflection of the macrocosm outside us. So we are a part of the universe. God is, God is everything. God is the universe. We're a part of God in that sense. 
right? This is the whole idea in Vishishtadvaita anyway, Sharira Shariri Bhava, that, that, the, that, the, that the souls and, and, the, and, the, the, souls and, the, and the universe are like the body of God. He's the, he's the soul. He's the soul and we're the body. Why do we say he's the soul and we're the body? Why don't we say it the other way around? Because the soul, the, the body subs only exists because of the soul. When the soul leaves the body, the body deteriorates. So God is everywhere within everything. And he is the thing which gives us life. Right? So that's why that's the understanding of Ramanuja Sharira Shariri Baba. He, he, he pervades everything from inside. He also pervades everything from outside. Right. So we, in order to understand everything, which means understand God, God is everything. So in order to understand everything, we have to also understand the, the we understand the externals and we have to look inwards also. So we meditate upon the external and, and there's ways in the Shastra of meditating on the external, the Shishamara Chakra in the, in the sky, the universal form, Arjuna saw the universal form. In, in, in Krishna showed it to him like that. That's an external form of God. The universe itself is an external form of God. And, and in order to understand that external form, we also meditate on the internal form because God is not only external to us, but he's also internal as a super soul. So the body and the mystic yoga system and the Kundalini and all the different chakras is directly relatable to the universe the microcosm and the macrocosm. This is the idea in, 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 in Pancharatra and in other Agamas also. So there's the half of Pancharatra is that, jnana and yoga. The other half is Kriya and Charya. Kriya is what? Kriya is the, the activities of making a temple, installing the deity. Only the last part, only the last quarter part is actually worship of the deity. So... Half of it is half of it is esoteric meditation and, and mystic yoga. And the other half is external. Half of it is internal, half of it is external. Out of the external part, half of it is getting ready, getting the deity ready to be worshipped. And the other half of that, the quarter that's left, is is the actual is the actual rituals, the actual worship. I mean, there's rituals in Kriya also, because there's rituals in Pratista, obviously, and and there's rituals to prepare a temple and make a temple, which is covered in Hari Bhakti Vilas in the 20th Vilas, in the very last Vilas, in how to build a temple. The 19th Vilas, how to install a deity. The 17th, the 18th Vilas, how to, um, how to carve a deity, right? Before you install a deity, you have to carve the deity. You have to also have a temple. And before that, you have to be perfect in the mantra, which comes in the seventh. So it's all, it's all logical. There's a logical pro progression there. You have to become perfect in the mantra, right? In, 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 by doing Purascharya, which is given in the 17th Vilas. Then you have to carve a deity. You have to find the stone and, and identify the stone and do the worship and get the Shilpis to make the deity. Then you have to install the deity. Right? And finally, you should know something about making a temple. The temple actually has to be made before you, you know, before you install the deity, but somehow or other, he put that at the end. So that's, uh, that's in that way, it's encyclopedic. Har Harry is totally encyclopedic. It covers all of the, those things. And, yeah. but, but you see the current, the jnana and the yoga part of Pancharatra, it doesn't cover really because it doesn't have, it doesn't have enough space to do it. So he lit, the other Goswamis have written other literatures to, to explain the, the, the esoteric meanings and, and to explain the, the, the doctrines and the internal meditations and things like that. There's other, but other books there. Gaudiya tradition completely detached from this, this part of yoga knowledge. They are not practicing mm -hmm. it, even, even right, like no, rejecting saying that this is inferior and no, no need for this. Well, no, I mean, you know, the, the, the whole, the Kundalini and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, 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 it's been taken over in Gaudiya with the, the whole uh, Raganuga, uh, Lila Smarnam and Siddha Deha type thing. 
So where, whereas in Pancharatra, somebody might be, but might be meditating upon the different chakras and doing Buddha Shruti in that way, the person in Gaudiya Vaishnavism is more interested in meditating on his Siddha Deha and, and his, you know, it, it's a, it takes, that takes the place of it mm. in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, in my opinion, anyway, like that. So I, it's there in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It's just a different form. You know, it, it, it comes in the form of the Siddha Deha and this uh, Leela Smaranam remembering the different leelas and things of Krishna. So it's okay. also there. But maybe not, maybe not exactly the, you know, all the Ida, Shishumna and Pingala and the different chakras and those things. That's, yeah, you're right. That's not there. Yeah, because this is like more material, mystical knowledge or metaphysic knowledge. Yeah, I mean, it's a, di it's a different way of, of thinking about uh, different it's a different certainly a different way of thinking about the about the body and the universe and everything um the the gordia system is basically to think about another universe yeah. rather than thinking about this universe so the yeah. lila smarnam and the, and the, and the ragaduga bhakti it's all about thinking that we're in goloka Vrindavan. it's not in, in vaikuntha we're not thinking we're not thinking about being here in this material world and understanding and realizing this mm. uh, because because the emphasis is not there on the universe as being the body of God, let's say, right? We're not really interested in this material universe in Gaudi Vaishnavism. We're interested in that other place. We're interested in Goloka Vrindavan. So we meditate on that and the Nitya Leelas that go on there. And so forget about this place. We don't need this. Whereas the idea in, in Pancharatra and the idea in Sri Vaishnavism is that this is also spiritual. This place is also spiritual because it also comes from God, you know. Um, so therefore, we're here now and we can realize this as the body of God. And if we realize this as the body of God and we meditate in the, in the way that's given in the, in the Agamas, that's the, way, that's the way to do Agamic worship like that. So, yeah, of course, we see that the Gaudias are moving away from traditional Agamic practices, traditional Agamic practices. At the same time, Hari Bhakti Vilas is a bit of a, 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 a is um, let's say it's 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 in the it's in in between there because he's obviously he's aware of 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 many Gaudiya doctrines and things like that but he's the book is written in the beginning of the Gaudiya Sampradaya and perhaps there were not so many esoteric texts that had been written at that time about Raghunuga Bhakti and Siddha Deha and and Manasa Seva and Lila Smarna so. So because those things hadn't been introduced or perfected by the Goswamis and the later writers, uh, uh, Acharyas of Gaudiya Vaishnavism as of yet, right? So, or in other words, maybe it was there, but it wasn't codified. It wasn't written down. Just like in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, there, there are some things which were there, esoteric secret doctrines, which, but they weren't, they weren't written down necessarily. They were passed on orally from master to disciple so that may have been also there in the in the, in the beginning of the uh, Gaudiya Sampradaya too sometimes these things are considered so secret that they're not revealed to every person or every disciple they're not revealed in uh, they're not written down either and and a lot of times the same thing with the the Pancharatra too some of these Agama texts so even these different tantras they when they're written down they're written in code so that even people who know Sanskrit, they can't really understand the exact nature of the thing. And you have to have a guru who has been taught by his guru the, the secrets of the text to teach it to you. Otherwise, you don't get it. You just don't get it. You, you, you can see it in a, in, a, in a superficial way, but you don't actually get the very internal. Um, and I think anybody who's, um, who's, who's watched any of the... Uh, uh, classes on some of the uh, Mumukshapati that we that we're doing here uh, sometimes um, they might realize that 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 just by reading a book of Vedanta you can't understand some of these secret uh, these secret doctrines so that's the same thing I think the same thing in all Sampradayas that you, that you have a certain face that you put to the uh, to the world that you know about Vedanta and, and Gita Basya and and, uh, and common common um, philosophical and, and spiritual doctrines that you have. But then there's a very, there's a very uh, secret doctrines which you preach only to the people who are, who are qualified to understand them, right? Who, who have 
gone through the practice themselves for some time and they're they're in a more advanced stage you know i mean this this whole series of, of videos we're doing on Hari Bhakti Vilas for most people it's just a complete waste of time for most people they 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 need to know very basic spiritual things they don't need to 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 watch these these uh these discussions of the of the intricacies you know the, of the details or the or the deep uh, esoteric meanings they'll, they'll come to that later they have to come to that later you have to you have to um crawl before you can walk you have to walk before you can run so that's <clears throat> that's the way it is with uh with all these things but anyway your your point is well taken very well taken about uh, about the difference and we should always we can look at the differences but Hari Bhakti Vilas um, is therefore um, it's halfway towards the the, the Pancharatric uh, tradition or the original Tantric tradition, and then it's also trying to escape that and to get to uh, to get a, a free of those things and 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 some other system of uh, thinking of otherworldly activities of Krishna and whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a good discussion. Somebody maybe somebody can do a, a research project or a PhD on that that uh, uh, you know comparing comparing the original tantric tantric systems with the with the modern the more modern let's say because it's five hundred years ago so it's the more modern um, approach of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas to this to the inner meditation and the inner meanings of ritualism. Thank you.